late 90s, Al Barr had joined the Dropkick Murphys, so the Bruisers broke up. At kind of around that same time, I had sort of an opportunity to be in the Mike Ness solo band. I was 21 years old. And uh, long story short, I wasn't quite ready for the gig yet. I was still a little too young, a little too green, and really had a lot more to learn about music. Um, so I got fired from that gig. And when I was in Hollywood at that time, the Dropkicks were on tour with Motorhead. And Al had just sort of, this was, I don't know what it was, maybe his second tour with the band, with the Dropkicks. I, I think he really needed to have sort of a piece of New Hampshire of his youth sort of out there with him and I really needed something else to do. Uh, drop kicks were blowing up so I was happy to be there for him and happy to sort of learn that side of the business, you know, more of the behind the scenes stuff. So I worked for the drop kicks for years. We were, it was only a couple of us on the crew and I think it was a four piece still. And it wasn't until I, when I met my, um, what became my ex-wife and uh, the mother of my kids, we were in Los Angeles. She had mentioned that, oh yeah, I sort of grew up playing the bagpipes, uh, going to school in Scotland. So I thought, okay, well, maybe you can sell t-shirts too. And they only had a couple of bagpipe songs. So she kind of came out there with us and started playing the bagpipes. It was sort of their first sort of touring piper. And I was a road manager and, um, and she was bagpiping. Uh, we found out we were expecting our our daughter, so she couldn't really tour anymore. And uh, kind of right around that same time, I went to a Joe Strummer and the Mescalero show, and, and I saw Joe Gilman and, and Dickie from the Boston's, and they were like, "Tell you what, come and work for us, and you can do half the amount of work for twice as much money, and you'll be in a nicer bus with nicer hotel rooms and everything else." And I thought. All right, that sounds good. It sounds like a good idea. And that's pretty much when I started working for them. And um, still had my hand in music, but really, I had a family to sort of provide for now. So I started doing more of the behind the scenes stuff. I started working for a management company with uh, a couple of friends there. And we did, you know, a bunch of stuff. We did Paul Westerberg stuff, a bunch of stuff for Vagrant Records. and. Um, um, as well as dropkick stuff and, and everything like that. and Really got involved in that side of music. And then that's also around the time where I got interested in music production as well. I ended up producing some punk rock bands and shortly after that, Street Dog started. And next thing you know, I'm like, God, it's, I've somehow managed to stay in punk rock and provide for my family for 20 years, you know, whatever it was, I, I, I just realized at one point while well into adulthood that I guess this is what I'm going to be doing to sort of make ends meet. You kind of learn how it's all done and you get involved in a side of music that it can be distasteful at times. It, in many ways it made me sort of hate music because the business side of it can be pretty ugly and, you know, friendships sometimes come second to commerce and all that kind of gross stuff that happens in music. So eventually I just thought I want to get the hell away from music uh, business and kind of get right back into you know the more creative side of things. So I started Street Dogs around that time with Mike and Rob Udotti and some other guys. It was great. We saw the world. We put out, I don't know, a many five, six records and really had the time of our lives, you know. I can hardly believe that now that I'm 49 years old that somehow I've managed to sort of piece these experiences together, but here we are.